Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo working on a landscape and there's a particular technique I have been using that I feel like really gives me a shortcut to a better starting point on my images. And that is actually using the HDR merge extension on a single exposure. It really has a dramatic and beautiful effect. Before I dive into that, I do want to tell you, and I've hinted at this in previous videos, as well as in my newsletter, but I've been working on a big bundle that I'm going to be launching soon around HDR Merge and how to get the absolute most out of using that to create beautiful but natural HDR photos that's coming soon. And that's going to include a lot of things, private videos with my raw files, presets, an ebook, lots of things. If you want to be the first to know about that, join my newsletter. There is a link down below. And by the way, when you join my newsletter, you get 10 free presets for Luminar Neo anyway. So might be worth uh, picking that up regardless, simply because I also share lots of tips and tricks every time I send a newsletter. Okay, let's dive into this video and this specific workflow. I've got this photo here from Iceland, and admittedly, it's a little bit dramatic already, but what I want to do is really kick that up and make a beautiful but natural and yet dramatic result. And so for me, I take that single exposure, I drop it into HDR Merge, and all I'm going to do is chromatic aberration. Because it's a single exposure, I don't have the ability to pick one of the multiple images for ghost reduction, nor do I need to worry about auto alignment because it's a single exposure. But this works on, honestly, every single photo. And I'm going to let that mer merge, if you will, into an HDR. It's essentially tone mapping this single exposure. It's going to drop it into the HDR merge folder and then I'll show you my edits. Okay, here we are. It only took a couple of seconds and I did go ahead and remove the spots. Uh, no point in wasting your time watching me do that. Also slightly straightened it, but that is my image already an improvement. The light's a little bit more balanced. There's a little bit of additional drama in the photo in the right places because the natural results from HDR Merge I think look fantastic. So that's my base HDR Merge now. And what I wanna do is work a little bit around the contrast and the highlights, maybe pull that down a tiny bit, maybe pull up the shadows just a little as well. I might uh, adjust the black slightly and pull up the whites. What I don't want to do is get overly uh, over the top, over dramatic. And so a good way to check your highlights and shadows, of course, is to hit the J key and it'll show you in red anything that's blown out. There's nothing here. It'll show you with that blue overlay right down here, and that shows you things that are completely black. A tiny bit of complete black is absolutely fine with me. I'm not worried about it. I'm also going to go into curves and do a slight S curve. So all that's doing is giving a little bit of additional contrast. If the curves tool is a little confusing or even intimidating to you, check out that recent video, what I call a beginner's guide to curves. Here in Luminar Neo, it'll give you everything you need to know to get over your perhaps fear of using that tool. I don't mean that as an insult. I was totally afraid of that tool for so long. Uh, I avoided it, honestly. I was always like, oh, not curves. Anyway, it's not as scary as it seems. That video will help. Um, also, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go into the greens, and what I wanna do is add just a little bit of magenta. This is a beautiful sunset, so I'm just taking the mid-tones and just giving it a tiny, tiny bit of magenta. I don't wanna do too much, just a little bit. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna hit sharpening you know, maybe about 15 or 20. I like to do that just a little bit when I'm in the develop tool. So if you look at the before, that's before develop, but that includes the base tone mapping that HDR Merge delivers for you. And now with a little bit of work in develop, I think I've got a better starting point, but of course I'm not finished. What I generally do on just about every photo is go into super contrast for my second move. And that's again, simply about adjusting the light. For me, my global edits at the beginning of a uh, photo edit are pretty much always the develop tool and then super contrast, and these are being adjusted across the entire photo. You will notice as I'm dragging these highlights left, it's kind of brightening that little part of the sky like here where it kind of comes in almost like a V underneath that cloud, which interestingly almost kind of mirrors the V that you see right here in the mountain. So I do want to do that. But again, I like to turn on the J key and you will see that I'm getting a little bit of blown out uh, parts there. So I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit and I'm gonna adjust this contrast a tiny bit, pull that back slightly. I've got the highlights completely under control, but it's a little bit uh, different look there, which I like. I'm gonna play with the mid-tones as well. 
I actually like them a little bit brighter. I don't want to overdo the drama, which means I don't want to overdo contrast because when you have a really, really high contrast image, it looks more dramatic. And I just want to have a natural, uh, dramatic result, natural result, but a beautiful one. And I'm going to play with shadows a little bit as well. And I might go a little bit to the right there. Let me take a look at this before and after. I think that looks really good. I'm going to hit the J key and turn off that. And so I feel like I'm done with my global edits. What I want to do now is play a little bit with color, specifically the color that I'm concerned about here, you know, concerned is that orange in the mountain and the reflection. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into the saturation of that orange. I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. And that's one thing that you will notice when you're uh, creating a lot more contrast in a photo is it does make your colors pop. So you might want to come in and adjust things. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is that you don't want to have every color be really intense because then it becomes like a huge kind of visually distracting kind of thing. And so there's already a lot of blue. I've added a tiny bit of magenta kind of in the sunset kind of look in those clouds. I'm pulling back a little bit of that orange just to make sure that it doesn't look over the top. And while I'm at it, I'm also adjusting the hue. And that's because, let me point this out here, specifically on yellow, you'll notice that if you go to the right with the hue on yellows, it's really green and I don't like green in this kind of photo. And so what I'm gonna do is take the hue of the yellow uh, to the left, which is gonna make it a bit more orange. As you can see, that's creating a little bit more orange. Whereas if I go this way, it has a little bit more of a green tint and you can actually see the green getting really strong over there. So I'm gonna go to the left with the hue on yellow to make sure that it's more orange. And then the orange, I'm gonna take the hue a little bit more left to make it a little bit more red. Let's take a look at this color adjustment. There it is before, there it is now, and I think what I need to do is pull that saturation of the yellow down as well, just a little bit, and maybe the orange a little bit more. I'm just trying to keep it from being over the top. Again, natural but dramatic. I'm trying to balance those two, and it is a delicate dance, my friends. It is, but it's fun trying. That's what it looked like before in those orange and yellow hues in the mountain and the reflection. That's what it looks like now. That's a lot tamer, and I think that it looks better because again, I don't want to overdo every color. Well, actually, I don't want to overdo any color, but there's so much blue in it, and that blue and orange play off of each other really nicely, but I think it makes sense to control those orange and yellow tones in the mountain, and I feel like I've done a good job with that in the color tool. Now, the other thing that's really fun to do on any image, really, and I think doubly so on HDRs, and especially if you're trying to create a little bit of a dramatic photo, and that is Structure AI. And what I want to do is crank this up a little bit, and I want to be careful again, natural even though i'm going for dramatic structure ai i'm at 26 right now and i love what it does to the surf i do want to be careful what it does to the clouds i really like the smoother clouds this is personal preference so here's a nice little trick basically what i want to do is get mask ai and i'm going to select that sky and the reason i'm selecting the sky is because i don't want it in the sky and i know that sounds counterintuitive but what i want to do is select the sky and it's gonna apply that structure adjustment just in the sky, as you'll see here, there it is. But again, I want the reverse of that. So instead of coming in and saying, oh, well, if I collect, uh, select you know, architecture and water and mountains, maybe it doesn't get everything, I can select the sky, and then I come over here to the masking tools, and I just click invert. And when I click invert, uh, if I click show now, it basically picks everything except the sky. So you can select the sky and then go to invert, and just get everything but this guy. So that's a quick little trick for applying certain tools, whatever tool you may be masking, into areas uh, that are not selected by Structure AI, for example, or excuse me, by Mask AI. So what I've done, a little bit of Structure AI in the, the beach, if you will, which includes that reflection, which I want to be crisp, and the mountain. So basically it's everywhere but the sky, and I think that looks pretty good. And then once you have it in, you can dial in your settings. I mean, if you wanted to go a little bit more dramatic, I think you can get away with that on a scene like this, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with like mid 20s. I think I was at about 25 or 26. I'm gonna stick with it there. And then the only other thing I really wanna do to wrap this up is just come into develop, and here I'm gonna get a linear gradient, and I'm just gonna drag this right up in here. And all I'm doing is basically grabbing that foreground area, and I'm slightly gonna brighten it a little bit. Like I said, I want dramatic, but I don't want over the top, and I don't want too much contrast uh, in that foreground, so I want it a little bit brighter. And if you look at the before 
and the after. I've achieved that. In fact, that's probably a little too much. I'm going to pull that back a little bit, maybe about a 15. I think something like that looks pretty nice. One more time before and after, just a slight brightening. And that's basically dialing in my settings by masking and doing essentially a global, or excuse me, a local adjustment. I talk about that quite a bit in that video if you want to check it out. Let's look at this entire photo one uh, more time. There it is before, spots and all. It was a raw file. I dropped it into HDR Merge, got a really beautiful and I think natural result, uh, which is this. And then with further refinements and adjustments, I think I have a really beautiful but natural looking single exposure HDR. And that's why I said it's a little bit like a, a shortcut to a better start by using single exposures in HDR Merge. And uh, hopefully that gives you some idea of how I'm using this tool to really get beautiful image edits in a short amount of time. Again, check out my newsletter down below. Sign up if you like free presets for Luminar Neo. And if you want to be the first to know about my bundle when it's ready, which is coming really soon, that's my image edit for today, my friends. Hope it gave you some insights into what I'll be talking about here in the future and gives you some tips and tricks to use on your own photos. I'll be back really soon talking about more of this stuff. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing great. Appreciate you guys hanging out for a little bit. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.